Welcome to Virtual Coffee with Don Rickabaugh, the Note Queen, where we talk about owner financing and notes. Financial solutions, one mom and pop to another. Um, welcome to this morning. Hey, Axel, it, by chance, uh, have we done anything to go, um, go over the housekeeping items? I, I have, but other people have joined since then. Okay, um, so... Yeah, so why don't you just uh, go over that. Um, Again, you're here at Virtual Coffee, Anything Owner Financing and Notes. I'm Don Rickabaugh, your host this morning. So uh, Axel, take it away. Uh, Again, welcome um, uh, to Virtual Coffee this morning. As I mentioned previously, we encourage engagement, asking questions. Uh, This is really an open format uh, for people to engage with Don to unmute yourself. Uh, In the bottom left corner of your screen, you'll see a little microphone if you're on your computer. Simply click that and you can unmute yourself and jump in. If you're on the phone, uh, you can press star six and it'll do the same thing. And to mute yourself, star six again. And for call quality, we ask that if you have a noisy background, just be courteous and uh, either mute your line or I will help you mute your line for you. (laughs) Again, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Well, awesome. Um, most of you know, uh, if you've been around here a while, that um, I just really love these calls. To me, owner financing and notes is part of a much larger conversation of uh, just empowering the people and plugging from the uh, powers that be, taking a little more charge of your life and actually just creating more wealth for your family and your community, more economic resilience for um just where you live right? and, and small communities across the country. So um, anyway, I think it's a super powerful tool and I'm super happy to talk about it. I think really quickly, um, uh, we'll just go over, there's a couple of questions that got emailed in and, and then we're gonna uh, head over to our hot seat interest forms. Looks like we have a few of theirs, those too. So we'll try to move fast so we can get through a lot of stuff. Of course, if you have anything that I'm saying, just this is a disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. You know, I, I'm a note queen. I'm not an attorney and I'm not a tax advisor and all of those things. So just take everything with a grain of salt and you should do your own due diligence and, and confer with your own trusted advisors always. Okay. So anyway, um, Sue Ellen, Sue Ellen, you, uh, can you unmute her? Is she here? She's almost always here. She's yes. great. Good morning. I'm gratefully here. Thank you, Dawn and Axel. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, instead of me reading your question, why don't you read it? All right. Well, I, I slightly uh, I uh, built, uh, <laughs> rewrote it. Um, I'm wondering if contract for deed or bond for deed or anything and that similar nomenclature, which are really tantamount to lease purchases, can they be sold and resold in our note space, much as notes are? As we're requiring our buyers list slash lease purchasers to maintain payments through our servicers so they can rebuild their credit and eventually, you know, either um, refinance or we can sell the note, whether it's performing, semi, or non-performing at some time in the future? Yes. So um, so basically, I hope I got all of that. But, but in the first part was our contract for deeds or land contracts, sales, whatever. There's lots of different names for them. Uh, basically sort of a glorified lease option. Um, are those marketable the same way that notes and mortgages and notes of deed of trust are? And the answer is yes. Um, oh, yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now, I wouldn't say they're as widely um, accepted because uh, it's, it's just, I don't know all the reasons, and people that know more, please um, please uh, chat in or email Axel, you know, important information on this stuff, and maybe we can send it out afterwards if you're not able to, to jump in on the call, because I'm the brain juice in the room is what we're really after here. I'm just, I'm just facilitating this conversation. So, but... <laughs> I personally don't, I used to think I liked them more in the early days because, oh, you get to be on title. And now that's the reason I don't like them because I don't want to be on title. There's a whole, there's a whole host of issues that can come up being on title to a property that don't happen when you're simply the the lien holder. Um, And also, you know, the, 
there's a lot of things that can change state to state, whereas mortgage law, I would just say, has a lot longer history and is more predictable um, in general. So I, if I'm going to buy, if someone brings me a land contract, and this is only me, I know there's people that actually buy them in high volumes. The, they'll, they'll buy a million or two portfolio at a time from some vendors who are just cranking these out over and over and over. So just my opinion, there's a market for everything. It just depends on, you know, getting to that buyer and, and their criteria. But I usually make them convert to a note and deed of trust uh, before I'll buy it. So you bring me a land contract? Nah, I'd rather just buy the note. So, um, and, and sort of it's counterintuitive because you go, oh, well, it's quicker to get them out if you own the property, right? You don't even have to foreclose. Right. Well, that's, that's not necessarily true because um, depending on how much, equitable interest that they have, it could be treated just like a mortgage. Some that's, say that's true. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So it's still kind of uh, subject to all the Dodd-Frank and all, and all the things that, that notes are. So I hope that helps on that regard. You have quickly some other aspect that is escaping my brain. Well, I, I was just, the second part of it is just to let everyone know what our strategy is Mm -hmm. on that and we're requiring our buyers slash lease purchases to maintain payments through our servicer and thank oh, you for recommending yours they're great the ones in new jersey they i appreciate that so that they can rebuild their credit the purpose of this us sure is, to build, is to help people who are disenfranchised to be able to have own work toward home ownership oh yeah and i love it i love it That's who are you cool. Is Madison? Yeah, Madison, yeah, they have been yeah. so great to us. Thank you that for that. Madison Services in New Jersey, I highly recommend well, them, and they are in almost every state, so they're going to handle. We're buying in um, all different states, so it's very ha uh, good to have a one-stop shop, and yeah, you know, they've been great. Exactly. Yeah, uh, Madison, and um, for for national servicing, uh, I think. And now, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're the only ones that um, report to the credit bureau so that the borrowers actually can build their credit back up from the mortgage payments that they're making. Um, the, right. the only other exception that I know of is August REI, but they only are licensed and do business in Texas. So, yeah. Uh, We're not going to Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's very important to get set up with a, with a servicer. They're a little more expensive than like you can get servicing as cheap as like 13 bucks a month, but I'm, I'm making the buyers pay it. So I really don't have a problem with that. It's to their okay. advantage. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Whatever the parties agree to subject to the, the sort of general rules, I think, uh, but here again, this is just me going, I think I sort of heard, and uh, I'm leaning away from having borrowers pay it be because um, uh, I don't know why, but I just have a feeling that it's it's something that's not exactly, uh, it's better for the, the um, either 50-50, depending on the client, or for the, the note holder to pay the servicing fees. I want to say that it might not stand up in some jurisdictions or just a sort of safe harbor guideline would be it's like, hey, the borrower is the borrower. You know, the uh, they have their mortgage payment. Like if they get a note through a bank, usually they don't pay an extra servicing fee. Isn't that true? I want to say. Yes, but this is for them to rebuild their credit. So it, it's. No, I totally, I totally understand it. And I bought notes where that was already included and I didn't really change it. But if Christian. Right. Push, push came to shove, just know that you might have to like run your numbers so that you can, you can swallow that $35 a month uh, for servicing and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't ruin your projections. So just a Good point. Good thank point. you so much, Sue Ellen. I always appreciate you being here and, and adding well, great. We appreciate you, Don, immensely. Thank you for oh, all your generosity you. and knowledge. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm in awe of you, so. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can only aspire. <laughs> oh, right. I, I need to get my little, yeah, my little props are over there in the window that I haven't used forever to play up the green bit. Yeah. But anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for the okay. answer. Hey, have a great day. Um, okay. Is Nomi, actually, is Nomi on here? Nomi came to our last property investor summit. Oh, there she is. Oh, she is? Oh, she's on a phone. That's why.
Yeah, I'm here. I'm on the phone. Oh, hi, Nomi. Um, real quick, hey, just John, because I brought up the page uh, for the the meetup I do the fourth Tuesday of every um, uh, fourth Tuesday of every month. Okay, in Carson City, Nevada. So if you're here, come join us. Um, and then once a year, the first the first Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of every October, I do a two. It's two and a half day gathering in the Queen of Week. Uh, so my live event. So we have a, an intensive. Uh, we added here. You say it, it says seventh and eighth, but we decided to add a half day um, up front on the sixth so for the newer people, so that they can just be caught, brought up to speed with with glossary terms and basic concepts. So once we hit the ground running on Monday morning, you know, don't get totally lost in the conversation. So I'm super excited about that. So if you click on that, um, I've, we've already had a handful of people book their um, book their seats, and uh, you can stay with us there. Um, we got Mike Rostico from back east coming over. He's been in the business forever. I'm really excited to have him. Sherry Hill, uh, she was in the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. Um, if you guys remember that first. Robert Kiyosaki book, so she's kind of a little bit of a celebrity right here in Reno, and uh, Abby Shemish of Amerinote Exchange, she's a, a really, excuse my language, kick-ass note broker, and you know, he can tell you all the ins and outs, um, the, the real stuff, <laughs> you don't just get, you don't get any, any hype um, at all, so it's three seventy nine for two and a half days. And if you want, you can stay with us in one of these Lakeview townhomes. So we stay right on the lakefront. Of course, it's not really swimming weather right then. But um, if you want to stay family style, that is, people have reported that that's one of the most um, important aspects is all that networking that happens. So I think, Nomi, would you agree or not? <laughs> I, I think that that, I've been to a bunch of conferences in the last year, and that was my favorite for a number of reasons. One is, it was, well, it's a beautiful, beautiful location right on Lake Tahoe. And then the second reason is um, it was very small and intimate. And I, I loved how small it was. And I, um, I love your um, beginner class concept. I think that's really going to help. Yeah, I think it is too. This is our third year. So like we're, I'm really pretty at the new, new end of, of hosting events, but just the feedback that we've gotten is like, it's great, it's great. But like, I totally got lost and I go, oh, that can't happen. You know, so it's, uh, I'm really excited to be adding that piece. Um, and I'm really glad you were there. So I'm looking at your email. So why don't you articulate it since we have you on the line? Okay, well, you might remember sometime early this year or, or a few months ago anyways, I went on the virtual call, uh, virtual copy call. And I was talking about how do I get, if I have a loan, I have a note, let's say I have a note to somebody in, in Texas on a house in Texas. Right. And I want to bring in a passive investor, a, pa a, a private lender who wants to give me money based on the security of my note. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to get some of the cash flow and I want to give them some of the cash flow. What's the best way to do it? And we talked about partials, hypothecations, split partials. We talked about all kinds of right. instruments. Um, so then yesterday I was talking to a man who's worked in the mortgage uh, in industry, like on, with banks for 25 years, and he also has a law degree. And now he runs a, a, a capital management with mortgage pools and stuff. He's very, you know, very educated. And he 100% put his foot down and said, nope, that's all securities. You can't do that. And the best way to do it is, which is something you had mentioned one time about a year ago, I heard you mention, was to just give them, give your passive investor a note, a promissory note. And if you ever defaulted on that promissory note, they would get your note. But it's a separate note. And well, you had mentioned that, and, you, and it's not recorded. So I just yeah. wanted to know what your thoughts were. Okay. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for bringing that up and you know refer to my disclaimer at the beginning I'm, I'm not an attorney and I if yeah. you ask 100 attorneys um, you're gonna get different they answers. All, you they really all say something do. different <laughs> right. so but so what I'm telling you is just what has been done for eons in the note business but what you're talking about a note secured by a note is a hypothecation 
So uh, what I think... Well, he was saying, he was saying, I said that, and he said, no, it isn't. Okay. And that's well, where I, I got confused. Okay, so um, I don't know. I've been confused for, for many, many years. I just stumble forward. <laughs> but it's just a common state. But no, um, what, what you put in your email, which I think is a great idea, is like put the underlying note in a personal property trust and, and share the benef beneficial interest in the trust. You know, to some degree, maybe, maybe identified by some document like a promissory note that, and nothing that's recorded externally or something like that. I mean, really when it comes down to it, what, whatever you call it, it is kind of the same thing, but I, but I do agree that um, um, I've been told a lot of times, you know, like, oh, well, this, even one promissory you note know, is a security instrument, you know, or, or you need a securities license. Well, you know, even if you're not hypothecating, even if you're not bringing in an investor, a promissory note by definition, you know, uh, is, is a security, right? So um, you can go so far as to say you have to have a securities license to own a note or carry a note or something like that, which is a little bit crazy. You know, so anyway, everyone, each to their own, but um, partials, and and other such uh instruments have been used just it's forever i mean there's a long long history i know you and, and i said know, that so I, 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 I told I'm them that saying, but. but it's fine so what you have to do is like what do i feel good about and and if anything why just put the note promissory note in a trust like you can put a property in a land trust you can put a note in a mm -hmm. um, personal property trust and there you could have several different types of, of interest and and their various interests and in how they're paid out defined in that so actually in a way it, if someone's recorded like if I sell someone a partial upfront partial I record them mm -hmm. and they're secured in public book record right yeah so if something happens to me then they can recover the asset right right and, go after it um in, in a trust that maybe me or someone on my team um, is the trustee for the partial the, the one i sold the partial to they're not recorded independently they're all tied up in my my little world and, and so right. a way i think it's sort of less secure but it might like get you under the radar somehow but to me it's more secure really to give someone a recorded interest in public record versus Oh, I'm hiding in, in a personal property trust. I'm not saying that you're doing it on purpose, but like, what if did, what what if my whole family went up in flames in a, in a you know alien abduction? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, well, then I guess the person would have to uh, hire a lawyer to oh, it's uh, much go simple. after the trust. It's, it's much right? easier. The, it's much easier for them to say take over. They're already in public record as the the lien holder the legal lien holder, they can take over that asset with very little trouble versus having to sue and figure out what happened. And who, and it could take a lot of time and a lot of money. So anyway, I'm not going to go too deep in that, but I really appreciate you bringing it up. I think people should know about it. And if you have you know, more definitive answers on that, we're going to move on from this topic, but please email Axel or chat in and um, we'll try to get that feedback out to people if we feel like it has a lot of value. But, um, okay, well, thanks, thanks, for the, if, thanks for the information. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot, Naomi. Um, Bye. And is, is Dahlia here? Yes. Can you hear me? Hi. How are you? Okay. How are you, Don? <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. You, you are also, you're the, are you the same Dahlia that was at our event as well? Yeah, probably the only one. Oh, <laughs> you know, well, Naomi just before you, she was she was there too. And yeah, I, only two of you right in a row. Yeah, I know Naomi. I spoke with her. She's a really great woman. Yeah, fantastic. So, talk to us. We got about we we got about uh, five to seven minutes we can spend before we're gonna uh, hop on over to our hot seats. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to share with you that I actually was just about to buy my uh, first partial. Uh -huh. So excited! <laughs> I did oh, a lot good of for you. Yeah, but then I realized that I can probably do more uh, or I guess yield more a, a different route as opposed to buying a, a small partial. I can probably be a lender. Um, are there any, could you tell me, are there any drawbacks um, as far as yield uh, for 
being a lender, a private lender, just maybe do one okay. deal, one deal yeah. a year? Okay, Let, let's just put numbers to this. This is where our, our trusty little calculator is going to come up. Okay, let's, how much money do you have to work with, Dahlia? 55. So 55,000. And if you made a note, here, first, clear all. Okay. The, for anyone who doesn't know, this is the HP 10B2 financial calculator, Hewlett Packard, um, and this app is by Inaday Development. I mean, it's six dollars or something ridiculous. Everybody should own this. If you're if you're over the age of seven, you should own one of these and learn <laughs> how at least to use the top five buttons. Okay, it changes your life. Just a little plug there for my friends at Inaday, and there's other. I'm sure there's other ones, but they're my faves. Okay, so you have fifty five thousand, right? Yes. And so. What kind of a loan? What kind of a loan would you are you thinking of making? Tell me what your idea of loan versus buying a note. Okay, so as far as a loan, probably a six month to year loan. Um, this is a rehab flipper loan, right? So okay, you're yeah. Loan, you're loaning money to someone who's flipping properties. Yes. Right, and are you wanting to be in first position, or do you are you okay with second position? Well, I guess that's kind of a question I have also. If you're doing that kind of thing, would I be, because there's going to be a mortgage loan probably, right? Which, so that would make me second position, or how do I become a first position with a, with a, as being a lender? Okay, if you're, if you're going to be a lender, uh, a primary lender, and you want to be in first position, which is what I recommend, unless this 55000 is like gambling money and it, it wouldn't affect your life one way or another, if mm -hmm. you lost it, <laughs> yeah. right? So okay. for you to be in first position means like someone's going to, hey, Dahlia, buy this house. I can buy this house for like uh, $60,000. If I put 10 in it, I can sell it for 100. Will you loan me 55? Oh, okay. I'll put five. I'll do the rehab. Then you're in first okay. position because you're helping them buy the property, okay. right? Yeah, but I wonder what the likelihood of that would be in this market right now. Um, well, it, just, it depends on where you're at. So you want to know, so someone who's buying a house, they're – if, if this is the acquisition cost, you know you're in a market where the average after repair value is probably between 80 and 110, mm -hmm. 20, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if they're in an area where the, uh, the properties um, are, are worth 300,000, the 55,000 in first position is never gonna be enough right. to right. help, right. right? So okay. basically, you can be first position um, on a property that's worth, let's say, 100, thousand something like that maybe mm -hmm. 90 to 110 and then uh i'll put it in so that would typically be like a um uh, and it's interest only right interest only or even a, a straight note where they pay all at the end i think a straight note over an interest only okay uh, so we'll do both so okay. let's pretend you're gonna ask, ask for it. so what's the interest rate that you think an investor would be willing to pay you um I would I would want at least around 10 11 okay I and depending on the area that's super reasonable um, okay. in some in some areas here in the in the west part of the United States it's not that hard to get private money down into the um, you know eight 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 nine nine percent private okay. money. It's hard to get but in some areas like in the back east in fact there's a guy that comes on this call has been on several times is like he loans his money all day out all day, every day at 14%, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it just depends on the numbers and the metrics of the area, right? Right, yes. So let's just say then you would get $458.33 a month, um, right? So, yes. um, or if you say, let's just let it compound, I'm going to put zero into the payments and my balloon at the end is going to be that. You know, so you give out 55000 This is without you charging points or something like that, right? This okay. Is, you're lending your money. You're just happy to have it working. You're not trying to, you know, make money up front, which means if you're not charging points, you could easily charge more interest, and it still works out better for, hmm. for, for the borrower because if they, they have to, if they had to pay, let's say, five points on this money, it would cost them, what, $2,500 up front? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's usually if you're if you're not charging points and you're just like, please just use my money, just grow my money, then 
then you can usually charge a little bit higher and it still makes a lot of sense for the flipper okay. or the, uh, the, ranger, the person who's borrowing. Now let's just see if you bought this partial. Tell me about the partial super quick. You well, it's actually, okay. So it's uh, there are little condos up in the ski area. So there's two of them and it's, um, it was uh, 120 payments off each one. And he was offering it uh, at 7%, and I, I played with the numbers a little bit, and I, and I said, no, that's too low for me. I'd like to have it a little bit higher. We got it to about 8.5. Okay, I'm just going to – we need to make up numbers here, so it's not exactly right, but right. Let, let's help, – help me. Are you, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so we've got 120 months, and um, you, so you got it up to 8, and it was fully amortized? Uh, yes. Okay, so then what? Um, so then, what is your? What was this part? What was the payment that you were going to get? I, uh, I, um, the payment was twenty six. Was that your PV, your loan amount, or um, what was the monthly payment? Or oh, oh the month, the monthly payment was uh, three twenty seventy six, three hundred twenty dollars. And seventy six. To make this a negative number because I always make negative numbers on these two right ones and the three left ones are always positive. So, so is this about right? Does that look pretty close? Yes, it does. Okay, so basically this is what you had. Uh, he's offering it to you at eight percent, but what was the what was the face rate on the note? It was nine. Nine percent. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, then you're buying. Can you see that the, when the when the partial rate is is lower than the face rate, mm -hmm. then you're actually buying you're buying twenty five thousand dollars of the note for twenty six thousand dollars. If this was a five percent interest rate, you would be buying thirty thousand of the note for twenty six thousand. So if they paid off early, right? They pay if they paid off early then you would get a bump, which would probably bring you up to 11, 12, 13%. Interest. Mm. So that's the one thing that you can have in when the face rate of the note is lower, when, when the face rate of the note is lower than, um, so basically your deal, like there was a hypothecation, nothing wrong with it. It's a great, if you feel good about the people that you're working with, it's a lot about, you know, do you, do you feel good about the people you're working with? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, and do you trust them? Do you feel good about the collateral? If you had to own this property, you know, would you be able to take take over the asset and start collecting mm -hmm. if something happened to the mm -hmm. operator, right, mm -hmm. your partner? Yes. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with it. But you, the, the bang for the buck with, with going long is that the early payoff can really jump your yields unexpectedly. Where with a private loan, you really don't get that. Okay. You get what you get mm -hmm. unless you take the property property back and you sell it for a profit, right? But with a loan, you get what you get. When you go long with an amortized product, if it sells off early, you usually have an unearned discount that bumps up your yield mm -hmm. and make it more, more favorable. And also, your money just keeps working for you. Every six months, do you want to be evaluating a new deal and hoping you can get it because then it's sitting idle for one, two, three months while you find the next deal that's just perfect for your $55,000, you know? So for most people, it's really, unless you have a hard money broker that's really good, that they, they make the points on the money and they can churn the money, they can keep your money working, there's no downtime, you know, it, it, is, it could be good to hook up with a hard money broker who could keep your money working, you know? Okay. Uh, but otherwise, well, it's really smart just to go along, you know, because then your money just keeps working. There's no downtime. Okay, maybe it's a little less, but someone who's going, well, I need to make 10 to 12 of my money, but I only want it, you know, short term, and then they sit idle with it for a while. They're actually doing, not doing any better than the person that says, I'll go along at 7 or 8% and just let it ride. Okay. Usually, you're, usually you're doing better to go along and let it ride. So, um, but anyway, thanks for bringing that up. And uh, I'm glad to hear that you're actively like looking and getting ready to pull tr the trigger on stuff. That is super positive. So thank you for bringing yeah. that up. Well, thank you, Don. Thanks for everything. All right, have a great one. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. All right, all right, Axel, um, anything before I head on into Hazona? Oh my goodness. 
Yes, we have a lot here. Hi, you hear me? I do hear you. Hear me you. Going? Oh, I even see no. you. You're in the I dark. You You're a I'm little in bit the dark. in the dark. I see you. <laughs> I see you, but I don't see myself. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, you must be a vampire. Yeah, right? Okay. Um, talk to us, because you were, um, I remember you. Like, you're, you're in New Jersey or something, or somewhere. Yeah, right? yeah. I called, like, in August of 18, I called. Oh, cool. Okay, so just um, briefly catch us up to, um, up to speed, and then um, let's go from here. And see how far okay, we can great. Um, hello, everybody on the podcast. I'm Hosanna. I would like to thank Dawn and you for choosing me in a hot seat back in August. I went back <laughs> and listened to the tape over and over again because my cousin, the tenant, is moving out now. Ah. I just, I just list, I just added uh, to Zillow the condo. It's in, it's in South Jersey. It's in a prime real estate location. It's booming. Everything is like, you know, it's really nice. But the problem is association is broke. <laughs> That's the problem. And I uh, put it on Zillow four days. So far, I'm only getting hits where real, you know, real estate agents call me. They want to list it, right. you know. But so I, I put it in for sale by owner. And my question to you, Dawn, is in whoever out there can help me. Um, if I carry back the note and the condo association is in the rears, like 30, they, they only have like $60,000 in reserves. Um, they... People owe us three hundred thousand dollars in delinquencies. We have a new attorney trying to get money back. It's just, it's just it's bad. I just see dollar signs. I just see association. Um, the dues are going to be coming up. So I just, I just want out. You know, I just, I just want to get out <laughs> before it gets worse. You know. Um, is is there anyone right now in the condo? Do you still have? Um, you know, that's that does sound scary to me. Like the trajectory doesn't sound good. Um. <laughs> so the, the question is, do you have institutional lenders right now that will land on someone buying? Buying a condo? I guess I could go, I guess I could go conventional, like if they put down 20%, you know? Right. So, um, it, so just remind me what, what's your tenant, your, your, uh, my cousin, he's my, he's my tenant. He's been there eight years. He's gonna, he's gonna move out soon. He's gonna relocate to um, and, genuine and you, parent. And remind me, I'm sorry, because I didn't have time to, this is a super- No, weird. it's all right. Well, no, but, but do you have underlying financing on it? I can't remember. No, no, free and clear. Okay, so why? So what is your point about thinking of caring? What's, what's most important to you? Like where are you at in your financial world where you would go? I might consider caring versus just selling for cash or cash to new one. What? Because I, I do like, I like the rental income. It was like $300. Oh, I was getting about 280, I'd get like 288 a month, you know, but I like the old, you know, idea of owner financing if they can't get a loan because they're, they're telling me that it doesn't qualify for FHA or VA. So I'm kind of limited right. for, so the, con know. so the condo, yeah, that's what I would guess. FHA financing, government sponsored financing is not available, right? For, for those. Correct. So what are people doing selling? What are people doing? Like when it, when a unit sells in that condo, are are they caring? Are they a lot of a lot of investors are coming in snapping them up? Okay, you know? so so really you're in a basically cash or owner carry kind of scenario. I, I guess not a lot of conventional twenty percent downers, or no? I don't think so. It's fifty percent owner occupied to renters, a little higher. Okay, it's fifty percent owner rock, fifty percent tenant occupied. They say a little higher in the. We just got new board members who are also the investors in there. And I'm thinking, I'm a newbie. I said, why would you buy this place? I wish I never did. And I see people in there buying them, <laughs> you know? Well, it's, it's at the price, right? So if yeah. they can rent yeah, they're it, selling. if they buy it for 25,000 cash and rent it, uh, rent it for a, a net profit of 500, then they, you know, they've got 2%. Yeah, the rent is the, the good thing is the rent is high there. They they rent my my for example my unit's a nine eighty square foot massive one bedroom. They can make it a two bedroom. They rent them out for like twelve hundred. My realtor is telling me you can rent them out for like a thousand. I'm only collecting with my cousin like eight hundred, but it's in a prime area like I said. So it's you know it's 
I guess it's an investor's dream if you want to tackle it. But so, so in a know. way, if you were just willing to be a landlord, landlord, it's fine. It's just you're getting scared. Like the HOA fees could yeah. start to be going through the roof, and then pretty soon you're upside down and not cash flowing as a rental or something like that. Correct. The exactly. They got. You don't want the exposure to the up uh, that whatever's happening, right? So. Yeah, that, correct, correct. Right, so I understand that completely. So then when we're thinking, well, if we're going to carry, which is great, I would I would definitely try to get at least 20% down. But you've got to, it's got to be someone who can really afford it and has room. Don't, don't you take up everything that they can, you know, the, their DTI right now, because they're going to need to be able to absorb future future raises an HOA because if the HOA goes up by a couple hundred bucks a month and they're already stretched, you know, by what they've agreed to pay you, guess what's not going to happen? They're not going to pay you. If they have to pay, something's got to give. So you're either going to get that property back when it has a bunch of liens already attached to it or, or you know, so you're going to have to leave room for that borrower. Otherwise, it's probably going to come back to haunt you. Does that make sense? So like, oh, let absolutely. Them that, that, Exactly. So, That's what I was thinking about. I'm thinking I, I'm, I might end up, I might be in first position or carrying back the note, but I, they might not pay. It might default. So I think, like you said, you answered my question. I'm just ready. I just should just sell it cash out and maybe, you know. You, you might want to. So what do you think you could get for cash? Let's just put some numbers on our calculator since we have it up here. So like if you I, could sell it for I cash. Think, I think I could sell for a minute. I, I had a CMA done. It just between sixty-five and sixty-eight. I could get for you know from cash? You know, retail. Cash. Oh, cash. I'll, I mean retail. Uh, I mean that's what retail. Cash retail probably. Mean? Like someone who you either know. has the cash or can get financing. Like what? Are, what? That's a different price, right? Yeah. Um, so you mean like uh, I'm thinking retail? Like I'm listening to MLS, you know. Okay, but do those realtors say that, okay, this is the price if you have someone who can get a loan, which half of Correct. them can't get a loan, so. Correct, that's what people get a loan. She says I could probably sell for that, you know. Okay. If, you can, if they can get a call, she said, she said cash buyers or investor, that's what she, that's all you can get, which is not much. Well, you know. investors are usually the cash buyers, right? Isn't yeah, it? so. Or, right, so um, if you can get, Look, I think you said you're going, maybe I'll, I'll list it for, for 70. And it just depends on your risk reward. But if you can sell it, if you can, if you can get cashed out and walk away with 65000 and you're only you know, thinking of owner caring for 70 with all these unknowns happening in the HOA, which really is kind of almost can be seen as a primary lien position, right? It's almost like, yeah. I don't know, it, it's not the same exactly maybe, but... You know, it's like ha having a mobile home in a park where the priority lien position is the space rent. You know, when I, when, I when I have a default in one of my mobile homes in a park, uh, I have to keep the first current, which means I got to pay space rent until I resell that mobile. And that, oh. that's, that takes down your, your uh, projected, uh, you know, earnings pretty fast. You know, 570 a month. You know, you're in it uh, 3,500, 4,000, which takes you six months to turn it back around. So people go, why are interest rates so high on mobile homes? Well, because of that asset class is a super high risk, right? So, but anyway, I would just say if, if you don't want to be exposed, I would just get out of it. And because if with all that uncertainty, unless you have other reasons, like there's never one right answer for everybody. So, but that's just my opinion because then you take that money, I don't know what your taxable how many taxes you would have on it, but um, you know, you can invest in, in other things that might be a little safer or, uh, uh, but who knows, who knows, you know, the yeah, world. Yeah, correct. Yeah, like you said, I, I don't have that much depreciation. So uh, the capital gain should be a big thing because I only started depreciating for like two years now. So, so it's not will, really. You will or won't? I, I, uh, it, it won't, I won't, I won't have that much. Well, okay. So cash, you're not being punished for taking cash. So that just really consider that could, depending on your own financial situation, which we won't ask you to uh, pull, pull up your financial statement out of here or anything, right? So, yeah. but if you were gonna carry, just for kicks and giggles, right? Take the cash, let's say you end up, and now you have 60,000 that you can lend uh, either, just like we did with um, 
Who are we doing that with? Well, I have to list it on Zillow right now, 70,000, like you said, owner financing. It's only been on four days. Four days, I got a lot of hits. I got a lot of interest. Okay, fantastic. So, well, but let's just see, like, what's the, like, in a safer, in a different environment with less of the exposure to the HOA, let's just for, for being able to compare, you're looking at giving up, let's say, 60,000 that you could invest safely at 8% and give up uh, and get 400 a month uh, times 12. So let's just see what you're, you know, th this is almost, let's say 4,500 to 5,000 a year in interest. Of course, then that's taxed uh, at some level according to your profile, but um, right. So that's just yeah. an example. All right. Now, if you sell for 70 and we're not doing closing costs and all that, right? We know that those factor in. But mm -hmm. if you're going to have 20% down, which is a conventional, that's 14,000 minus the 70,000. Okay, so your note amount, and I'm making that a positive number, goes in present value here. And what would the rate, uh, what, what could somebody afford? For, like, what are they paying in rent, did you say? It's, it, it's like uh, at least not, uh, for that size room, at least like 859, 900. Okay, so they can. They can afford 900 as a rent. Now, I'm not saying they can't afford more monthly if they um, if they own it, but I'm just going to pretend, hey, if you have 20% down, own for the same price you could rent, you know? So yeah, it's an correct. easy way to go. This is a high level of, of doability here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 900 minus what's current HOA. Current HOA, they just, and so the thing is that they just added that, the heating cause that the gas heat to the association three nineteen. Woo! Okay, what else? What? All right. So, so um, then, what else are they gonna have to pay? How much is insurance and property taxes and stuff? Like okay, that? got it right here. Got my whole sheet right here. Okay. okay fantastic. Okay. Um, taxes are fourteen fifty eight. Okay, give me a monthly proration, just ballpark. Don't okay. remember if it's super. Uh, uh, monthly proration. Um, okay. Um, okay. Monthly total expenses monthly. Total expenses for me is five, fourteen, sixteen a month. Does that pocket. include that HOA fee? Y yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay. So basically, I'm just going to take two hundred more and call it good, right? My cash flow is two eighty eight eighty four. My insurance went up. Fire insurance. Okay. So I want to leave a little extra room. Ordinarily, I would say they can afford this for P and I. Really, just going off of what market rent would be, and I would say mm, I want to leave them an extra room in case the HOA goes up another fifty bucks or something. So I would just go. Let's just say they can only afford for P and I principal and interest to me as the lender, the bank, the note holder, right? You, mm -hmm. the seller carry back guy. Okay, mm -hmm. and and uh, maybe let's just see. I mean. It's especially in these lower prices. It's I always use this, this back button because I'm always making mistakes. So 180. Let's see if they can fully amortize this over 15 years. Uh, nope, that would be a negative interest rate. <laughs> no. uh, you know, so I'm just going. Okay, what if it was 240? Okay, then you'd be carrying there. Basically, you'd have to go out 360 to make this even look. Now you're charging 5% interest you know, something like that, and they're paying you a little bit more. You know, you, you can just play with this. So if it's 6%, something like that. Now, people go, well, 6% isn't very good, but you just have to go, well, price versus terms. You're getting 20% down, which is good, right? Mm -hmm. some, so it's just whatever someone will agree to. Um, but you're getting your price. You're getting, uh, you're getting your money working for you. If you were just lending, you, you'd probably charge more, you know? <laughs> But then what can people afford? Maybe they can afford that, right? So um, those are just how the numbers would work. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Right? It makes so, sense. Like Right. So you can see that you have to play with it to make it work. So depending on what, how much they can come down, and if they have a nice credit score, uh, it would be great to um, – what I would do is get it serviced with someone who, like like Madison, I know $35 out of a $400 mortgage payment is kind of high, but if that can help improve their credit, 
who knows that, that they, they might not be able to refinance you at some po point early if you should ever want that. Maybe you don't want that, but um, does that make it sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but like you said, it sounds like it's a headache. I'm better off just taking the cash. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. To me, that, that seems like a good, a good choice. Sometimes yeah. it's better not to do. Owner carry is only one tool, right? So mm -hmm. it's not a golden hammer for everything. It's a good thing to consider. Some people, the, the, the reason why I love just like do, 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 get the message out is because people usually aren't even aware of these kind of options. It doesn't mean it's the right one for you. Right. So um, with all this going on, it just seems like maybe you take your cash and you're not going to have that much of a tax hit, you said, and um, look for other things that maybe you. So because if you have this, so uh, recall this. So that's your loan amount secured by a property that's worth 70,000. Right. You're at 80 percent loan to value. If you take that, if you clear, let's say you just clear 60 grand. OK, if you sell for clap cash if you clear 60 uh, um, and and you're secured against the property worth um, let's say 90 or even more then your loan to value is only 67 so it's a much safer position for you making just as much money and, and having more liquidity in ways that you can play with it depending if your if your needs change you know so I don't know but great great uh, topic for um, just showing some some concepts so does that does that help a little bit yeah oh no it helps a lot yeah it's great um you know it's just it's just you know it's a great it's prime real estate south jersey and it's it's like a great neighborhood you know you can walk across the street to the store there's a brand new shop right they built so the location yeah, so, so good so let's while investors are still rabid you know, and things haven't shaken apart too far yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just going to get rid of it before it you stops. Might just want to, you might just want to get it, you know, because if the market turns, you may have far fewer choices, right? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Dawn, for taking Oh, us. Thank you for being back around. I always love to hear the, the what if stories of like, what happened and all that. So, no, so, no, so like, no, you make it. it I really like it. I want to educate myself more on the note, you know, process and get some books and stuff and start learning, you know, more. Yeah. Um, okay. That reminds me. Um, uh, well, there's a lot of great stuff out there. Of course, you, you can listen to all the stuff that I do, but it's not an A to Z course. The only thing I do is really the live event. I do all you, I've been listening to all your podcasts. I started from the, the first one. I just downloaded your podcast. Oh, I'm listening to every over and over again. <laughs> oh, good. Well, make sure you go and listen. Uh, you know, the, the past mm -hmm. property and paper summits are also um, in the dashboard. If you have a free note queen account, right? You basically, you give me your emails, which basically I then spam you once a month. Hey, join a free call. Uh, and, and then <laughs> that's how pretty much all I do with the list. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I've got that. I'm already yeah. a member. I'm, I'm on yeah, but, but there's a lot of, and especially transaction review and calculator practice. Those videos are that I did for a couple of years, at least I think were really, wow. really awesome. But I wanted to give a shout out to Tom Henderson. And I want to say, uh, it's, uh, let me see if I can bring it up. I love this guy. He's such a sweet man, and he's like the veteran. Uh, I think it's Paper Sources, pitching him, Bill Mancaro. And I think they're pitching a course that Tom Henderson is, is going. So here, here paper, the Paper Source, um, they, they do a month or a yearly event, usually the end of April, too, in Las Vegas. Um, I want to see, gosh darn it. Okay, um, I just got an email recently, but Tom Henderson, I think he lives in Texas. He's doing a, an old guy, one of the one of the type of guys that I learned from, like like the salt of the earth people, like they like nobody was gurus really. You know what I mean? It was pretty much just like a whole different feeling back in the day, in the '90s and uh, early 2000s when I was kicking the tires of the note business. Um, so yeah. I highly recommend that anyone let's see. If there's a live event, darn it. Oh, yes, here it is. 
Uh, Tom Henderson's complete live course on acquiring wealth with seller financing and notes. Okay, this guy is just a sweetheart, and like I said, can't recommend you guys take a course from him if if those if that works for you. Um, so anyway, paper source papersourceseminars.com, look for Tom Henderson. Um, if you get a chance, just go go learn from this guy. I am tempted to go. If I could, the, darn it, the timing doesn't really work, but um, I pick up stuff all the time. If I, you just get one or two ideas that you can um, incorporate, it, it goes a long way. So there's just a little shout out to Tom. Okay, now we are having a few minutes. Axel, is there anything? I'll, I'm going to take a breath for a second. Is there anything I should be? Um, well, I had someone else email a question, or you can have time for Sheldon Pearson, which would be our last hot seat for today. Sheldon, great. Okay, is he live? <clears throat> yes, I'm here. Hi. Hey, Welcome very much. Well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've, I've been reading your material for a little bit and uh, re or listened to some of your podcasts. So I just wanted to jump on a first call and just had, you know, just a few more like general questions, more generalities than oh, people sound like that. Fantastic. Hey, so, it's a great way to end the uh, last five minutes of the call. So fantastic. So just more like, a, well, the first one I had is I, I read your article on the Golden Hammer, I believe it was of doing a simultaneous, simultaneous close. So I just, are there like specific states that like no buyers are just like, okay, I live in Texas, Dallas, Texas. So are there like certain states that are like, okay, I'm not gonna, let's say if I had a property in like Oklahoma or like Louisiana, like, no, we're not gonna be bothered with those states. Um, okay, so basically just to catch people up, what you're talking about is you create a note and then you sell it, table funding? Correct. Right. <clears throat> okay. So um, and you're just going, are there some areas that are more likely for that to happen than others? Right. Is there like a, like certain states, no buyers won't buy, you know, or do a simultaneous closing or like all, you know, 50 states that like will buy? Okay. Um, well, in general, every investor is going to have their, their own underwriting, right? Uh, okay. There's, a, there's, there's larger institutional buyers. There's a handful of those that most people couldn't find if they go Google, you know, out there in the internets. Uh, but, um, but there's individual investors that can have a whole host of different underwriters. So I might price something differently or do something differently if I have a note secured by a property right down the street from me versus over in uh, New Jersey or New York where it can take three years to foreclose or, and it's way out, the, you know, or, or right in the middle of, Gosh, you know what? The Midwest got hit so hard with, with winter and a little, you know, a little more conservative, knowing that, right. man, it's tough to carry a property long, long distance in the winter. Okay. <laughs> and try, try to get it turned around. But anyway, just, and then just a couple of points before I kind of go a little bit deeper into that is that in general, like it can be done, but most people would say it, it's not advisable to buy to buy it without the seller who carried the note receiving at least one payment because then you, you can basically be disguised as the lender. And there's a lot more regulations around lenders than there are note buyers, at least currently, right? So right. If, if you buy it right, right at close or right the next day, then it's much more easy for you to be this guy to space. Why does that always have to happen? But anyway, yeah, um, then, then it's just a little more dicey. So in general, if you're going to do it, you should at least have the note buyer, or if you're the seller and you're carrying the note, you should probably just um, have somebody, have the buyer make one payment to you and then sell the note. And then a lot of people beyond that, at least the one payment, to, so that you're not confused and, and are subject to all the regulations that are that lenders are direct lenders. Um, okay. Some it to me it depends on the down payment and is this an owner occupied? Is this a commercial? Is this a consumer? So it yeah. Well, there would be. I mean, it would. <coughs> excuse me. It's a little sick. But it would be a property that I'm buying and basically like rehabbing, uh, and then you know I would basically carry for them depending on the down payment um, right. to get 20, 10 to 20% or even more. Um, 
Right. Yeah, it, it, it would it would be along those lines. Um, so be it like a three bedroom, two bath home. Um, you know, and, over and what, square feet. And and what would and you're in Dallas, so yes. you know, so what what would your which is great, easy to foreclose there if you have to, but basically, what's your um for your exit price? What's your fair market value after repair value? Uh, anywhere from it wouldn't be like in Dallas, but it would be from uh, anywhere from one twenty to one thirty, hundred thirty thousand. Okay, and and that's actual fair market value, not not a premium for owner carry. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So then, and how much will you have into it? Acquisition uh, would have carry. <laughs> I would probably have fifty to sixty thousand in it. Oh my gosh! You have an easy double. Okay, so you're you're actually it would be pretty easy for you to even take a partial but here basically I, number one rehabber paper which mm -hmm. is what you have i treat that in a little bit different category than mom and pop well, they just they've owned this property they maybe have a small portfolio that they've had forever mm -hmm. or they inherited it or something like that rehabber paper i put it in a different category it usually comes with higher risk uh there's a lot more uh problems that can happen with it. And, and I know after, you know, enough years of managing my own portfolio, uh, I've seen the movie play out enough times, right? So um, I'm more conservative with rehabber paper. Make sure you get servicing, make sure you have mortgage uh, in our RMLO. You have Texas Pride there, right? They can do all that for you. But that's super important yes. if you want to turn your paper around. You gotta be squeaky, squeaky clean, but even so, I would I would probably not buy a full, uh, you know, out from under you. Uh, so, especially if it doesn't have like one or two years of the perfect payment history behind it. Because what happens a lot with the rehabber paper is mm -hmm. that you know, someone oh they're happy they they put down their money but then they get in there and they find that oh oh the uh, the you know basically they they paint it over mold. You know, so then they quit paying because now the value of the property wasn't what they thought. The rehabber did a crappy job. They just hid certain problems. So in in general, I don't, I don't, I just put it in a different category. It doesn't mean I won't do it. I'm just more conservative. But let's just say I would. Let's say in Texas, I would go, okay, the max I'd be willing to expose against this property is 65. And other people's numbers might be different. So that is the most money, even in the most perfect conditions that's the most I'm gonna risk against this regardless of the yield that's the first number I come up with you know um, but then if you've got 20% down and you got the 24,000 right yes like that then you're you're doing pretty good so I would say if you're super lucky and you find the right buyer you might could do that um, but for me I would more likely go I would rather just say oh, I'd rather be in this 50,000 and um, me personally, I might be looking for, let's say, I don't know, I might want 14% yield on this. Um, and depending on what the payment, what, what would a typical payment be for someone? P &I? Uh, I would probably do anywhere from maybe eight to 900. Okay, so 800, I'm yeah. buying P I. They might, so that means I'm gonna buy the next 112 payments or, you know, let's, I might say, if I, if I like it, depending on the due diligence, mm -hmm. I buy that, you know, something like that. So basically then you get your seed capital out that you have, to, I'm, I would be forcing you to carry a partial, you know, a partial. right. I would be for, I, I would not want to be in at 65 cents with rehabber paper that had no fees in it. But if that same person, here's a whole different note. If that same person put down 50%, that's already, I'm already, and then I buy your note at a little bit of a discount. I'm already at, at less than 50 cents on the value of the property. So, mm -hmm. so it just really depends. So I'll do, especially in certain circumstances, and this is just the note cleaning entertainment purposes only, I will do partials that are like my LTV or my ITV investment to value is like, like 35%, uh, you know, but let's say the okay. property is 500000 and maybe I'll have a position of 100 150 with the seller keeping a big piece of it. You know, I'll, 
people do that a lot more readily than something like this, where it's a rehab or fever to a, a consumer type loan. Um, in general, um, I don't know, I'm just blabbing, blabbing, but does, in any in any there, have I said anything that sort of gives you? Yeah, no, 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 it makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I was, that was kind of answering most of my other questions I had. There was, you know, you answered, yeah. but um, so partial i guess it, i'd be in a better market to sell as opposed to trying to do you know i guess a full sell yeah a full sell you're going to take a bigger discount and have a harder time having as many people that would be interested but partials uh can be a lot more um as long as you dot your eyes and cross your teeth um right. really really well because anyone who's going to buy this yeah the if you're going to sell to an institutional investor and sometimes they have better pricing than the individuals not always but you know they can because their cost of capital is a lot cheaper generally right mm -hmm. what you need to buy it at depends on your cost of capital and what your what else your risk reward type of thing but you know if they can buy it they're going to want credit though they will not buy it it's real tough to sell sell a note where the borrower's credit is in the 500s and get the right. best pricing. So if they have that credit, make sure you get August REI. You know, um, they're in Texas, and, and they'll report to credit, and so then maybe they can cash you out, and then your discounts, then, then you really you really get a huge bang for your buck. You, between the down payment and the partial, you get your seed capital back plus some EAT money, then you set up that borrower to improve their credit so they can take you out and maybe even offer them a short payoff if they take you out in the next two years. You know, you have a sliding scale. If you, if you can qualify for financing, I'll, I'll take $5,000 off the principal balance when you go to refinance. You know, there's ways to encourage people because then you really do much better. So anyway, just a few thoughts to throw out there. So, wow. Right. Um, but thank you for coming on, Sheldon. I wish you the very best. I appreciate you bringing okay. Super awesome question for everyone. So we are gonna wrap up. I appreciate you very much to, uh, being part of this. It's super. Um, it, it's it's just such a gift to me that you guys show up and participate in this. And um, just remember to use your powers for good and go out there and create financial solutions. Just one mom and pop to another. I will catch you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. You've been listening to Virtual Coffee with Don Rickabaugh. For more, please visit NoteQueen.com.